Bob's Burgers is one of my favorite shows of all time. Even though I'm a little obsessed with Louise, Tina Belcher is by far the best character on the show. She's weird and awkward and says what we're all really thinking inside whenever she sees a good butt. I love Tina even more whenever I think about the fact that she's voiced by Dan Mintz, because nobody can embody the angst and beauty of being a teenage girl like a grown man can. I'm Whitney Van Lanningham, and this is the best of Tina Belcher from Bob's Burgers. Number 10. Any list about how great Tina is would be incomplete without talking about her amazing, uh... <laughs> it's the perfect understated way to convey her inner angst, and I love it more than anything. Uh... No, it's definitely not as funny when I do it. <laughs> Number nine. This has to be the most inspirational quote of all time. I'm no hero. I put my bra on one boob at a time like everyone else. Honestly, Tina's the hero we need and the bad bitch we deserve right now. Number eight. In this episode, Bob lies to Linda about taking the kids night sailing so that he can continue playing his favorite video game, Burger Boss, at the local kids' arcade. Of course, they won't let him in without kids, so he has to improvise. On their way to what they think is a nighttime sailing lesson, Tina asks the hard questions. If we see any mermaids, I'm gonna ask them where their merginas are. Dude, I've always wondered that. How do mermaids even fuck? Is that why Ariel wanted to be a human so bad? Number seven. This line goes out to all the girls out there who might have heard that guys will only like you if you're dumb and pretty. Spoiler, it's way more important to like yourself. I'm sick of acting like a dumb, helpless girl just so a hot boy who dances his feelings will notice me. That's not who I am. I'm a smart, strong, sensual woman. Oh God. Fuck yeah you are, Tina. Number six. Not only is Tina the most booty-obsessed teenager girl on the planet, she's also a huge classic movie buff. Remember when she quoted The Godfather 3 in reference to Jimmy Jr.'s butt? You know what, Tina? Strong girls are hot. Put it on a t-shirt, Jimmy Jr. I don't want to hear it. Just when I think I'm out, those cheeks pull me right back in. Okay, can we also talk about how she totally blows him off like a goddamn queen? Number five. I honestly have no idea how Tina pulls off simultaneously being the most awkward teenager of all time and also the most confident, but I wish I was friends with her in middle school. In this scene, Tina tries to help her family please the moody foodie, a brutally honest blogger who leaves scathingly shady restaurant reviews. Time for the charm bomb to explode. Hi there, customer. Is someone hungry? That's why I'm here. Are you ready to order? Uh, yeah, I just need another second. Are you just gonna stand there and stare at me? Uh-huh. My favorite thing about Tina is that she really takes charge in every situation. This chick is fearless. Number four. In this episode, Tina gets a little carried away when she volunteers to help out at Tammy's Bat Mitzvah. This is her in for partying with BFOs, aka boys from other schools, and she's not gonna let it go to waste. The hand wants what the hand wants. I can't tell where your back ends and your butt begins. Oh, there it is. That was just too high. What can she say, Tammy? The hand wants what the hand wants, and you are kind of being a botzilla. Number three. Everyone remembers the first time their dad let them drive the car around the parking lot before they were old enough to get their license, right? It's basically a preteen rite of passage. Of course, Tina is way too scared and awkward to operate a motor vehicle, so her first Fast and the Furious experience went a little like this. Uh, Tina, you're kind of headed toward the only other car in the lot. You have plenty of time to turn, Tina, so just go ahead, turn one way or the other. You're just swerving back and forth. Turn one way and stick with it, Tina. Tina, for the love of God, turn away or stop! The brakes, Tina, on the left, you're about to hit that car! The brakes, hit the brakes! Uh. This is exactly why I didn't get my driver's license until I was 18. Number two. At the school dance, Tina finally has what she's always wanted. Two boys with cute butts fighting over her. It's the ultimate Jimmy Jr. and Josh showdown. Josh actually likes Tina, but now Jimmy Jr. finds himself wanting what he can't have. We can make this work. We'll come up with a makeout wheel, kind of like a chore wheel. Uh, I don't want to do this. Yeah, me neither. Give it a chance. Let's put the try in triangle. Of course, her little polyamory suggestion doesn't work out, and both boys break up with her. But hey, at least she tried. Number one. Right off the bat in this episode, we get an inside peek at Tina's hottest wet dream. Like any teenage girl, of course there's a sexy undead element mixed in there, but it gets even better. 
It turns out that Tina ran out of famous movies and TV shows to write fan fiction about, so she starts writing friend fiction about kids she goes to school with. What kind of a maniac wakes up an hour early to write erotic fan fiction? Me. Are there any shows or movies left in the world that you haven't perved up? No. That's why I've started writing erotic friend fiction, using people at school and zombies. Oh, do the janitor and the vice principal. I think they'd have beautiful children. I did, and they don't. I'm 100% positive that Tina's erotic friend fiction is way better than anything E.L. James has ever written. I also love that she's creative and weird and totally not afraid to be herself. You go, girl. There are countless moments on the show where Tina shines like a bright shining butt in the sky, so I want you guys to let me know which ones are your favorites in the comment section. Like and subscribe to Obsev, and I'm gonna go touch some butts.